Yo, what's going on? Get hip here. So today I thought I'd review the Thrustmaster T6000M. This is a incredible HOTUS setup. I love it to pieces. I bought this maybe about a week, week and a half ago. I unboxed it on stream and I initially bought this for Star Wars Squadrons, which is coming out in a couple of months. I'm sure many of you watching this video are likely watching this because you're also interested in one, getting a HOTUS, and two, specifically for Star Wars Squadrons, as I was as well. In this video, I'm gonna review, the, obviously, the device itself and also explain some of my reasoning behind choosing this stick over any other. Let's get into the video. I, so I unboxed this on stream about a week and a half ago. I'll be cutting between this footage uh, footage of the stick itself and also footage of me unboxing it during the video just to show you what both gameplay looks like and also the unboxing experience when it comes to HOTUS setups, you've got quite a lot of choices. You've got the Logitech SciTech, you've got the Thrustmaster T-Flight 1, you've got the Thrustmaster T-Flight 4, which was like the PS4 edition of the T-Flight the 1. You had the Thrustmaster T6000M, uh, you have a few other devices um, not bit made by Logitech or the Thrustmaster, and they all seem to get pretty mixed reviews besides the T6000M. For example, HOTUS 1, which is Thrustmaster's lower end version of the T6000, the main defining issue with that HOTUS setup is that there's a little cable running between both the throttle and the joystick that doesn't allow them to be separated more than 30 centimeters, which wouldn't work on the setup that I'm running at all. So instantly that was no longer an option. There's the Logitech 3D Pro, which doesn't have a full throttle, but has amazing reviews as a joystick on its own and is only 30 bucks as well. There's the Logitech SciTech. There's the SciTech X52 and the X56 which are on the higher end in terms of pricing but seem to get generally quite mixed reviews mainly down to the build quality i was very very close to purchasing the x52 before i heard enough horror stories off of reddit and youtube about hardware issues like the spring degrading over time the, the spring needing to be replaced the whole stick feeling kind of floaty and not having much of a snap back i was really struggling to find a, a hoda setup that actually fitted my need which actually fitted my setup and also wasn't a fucking hunk of junk <laughs> this led me to the Frostmaster t6000m now i've been using this for about a week now and let me tell you this thing is fucking amazing i love this setup so much i was initially put off by the orange color scheme and the plasticky look that it has but let me tell you this is one of the most well built secure clean comfortable like usable setups i have ever come across this is the joystick itself it has a hat on the top here it's got a button here it's got a button here it's got a button here it's got one two three four five six twelve buttons on the bottom here and you can also buy this stick on its own separate from the throttle as there's a little like the Logitech 3D Pro, there's a little slider here which you can control the throttle with. So you can buy this alone for about 70 bucks or so. This altogether is 150 bucks. I bought obviously the co the combo. I didn't have to buy them separately. You can buy them together or you can go and buy them separately. There's also pedals you can buy. I found I didn't need the pedals as on the back of the throttle, there's a little paddle here that can do the same job. And also on the joystick, uh, this twists as well if you feel like you need the pedals I haven't found I've needed them at all maybe it's a nice addition for really dedicated flight simmers if I turn this around get a good look at the the trigger very little travel distance so the trigger has a very short travel distance very snappy it's got a nice clicky feel to it so when you when you go to fire on someone you feel like you have that instant input i like this trigger a lot it's been great in terms of the actual movement of the joystick you have back forward roll right roll left and then you have a your left and right here you've got a lot of movement feels really good your hand rests nicely in this little groove here you also have a little 
thumb support here which you can flip to the other side if you are left-handed which is fucking amazing i know a lot of sticks do not support left-handed people very easily pop this side off and put it on the other side you can also do the same with this little base bit you can flip that around so anyone who's left-handed i definitely recommend this stick i've actually had no issues with this entire setup at all it's been solid as a rock so far in fairness i've only used it for around a week but i've used it very extensively for the last week playing a lot of elite dangerous in terms of these bottom on the bottom here these these 12 buttons six on each side they've got little braille marker dots here so if you're in vr for example like i am whenever i play flight sims i can easily identify the buttons it's still difficult to identify them but i'm able to well enough so the back buttons just have little indents so you know you're pressing the back buttons although i found the back buttons since they don't have little braille dots on them it's difficult to identify the back buttons i would like to mention these buttons on the top feel really nice i personally have this button here set to my secondary fire and elite dangerous so if i want to go fire like a missile or something feels really nice to just hit that button and see a missile fly out so it's a satisfying button press bah! we got a mission target over here <laughs> nice same with these buttons on either side they feel good as well so yeah the flight stick itself absolutely amazing this little base here actually has leds in it and when you move the stick and it's plugged in it will light up i don't really know the point of that i mean it looks cool ish i guess but you know especially in vr i don't notice it it's not bright enough that it would be annoying to people who are playing on their desk and and aren't in vr you're not gonna notice it too much i guess it's a nice feature i don't think it was really needed now onto the throttle. So this is the throttle. So this is the throttle. What sets this apart from other throttles is that it has this sliding movement. So instead of it arcing like a lot of Hoda setups do, this has a nice slide back and forth. Uh, you just push it straight forward straight back it's a nice sliding mechanism i feel like it's kind of stiff out of the box it'll probably loosen up over time i feel like i don't have super precise movements with it because at certain points it feels like it's getting a little stuck especially when you're just trying to make timely increments i'm sure that's just because it hasn't been moved before it feels like it's gone better over the last week and it's getting easier to make you know small adjustments so in terms of buttons on this on the right hand side you have one big yellow button here i think you have a hat here you have a it's difficult to tell how many points this hat has it's either eight or it's like two i personally in elite dangerous only use this for for two inputs so i i actually don't know how many inputs that is it might actually be four on the top with another hat so you have a ton of buttons already on this side to bind to you're not going to run out of buttons to bind shit to on the back you have a little thumbstick you have that little joystick on the back. This is a really nice inclusion. Hopefully Frostmaster know what they're doing when it comes to thumbsticks and it won't develop thumbstick drift over time. I actually don't use this for anything in my games. I haven't found anything to bind this to. It's nice that it's there. When it comes to thumbsticks, I'm always concerned that they're gonna develop thumbstick drift. So hopefully Thrustmaster know what they're doing when it comes to thumbsticks and this won't develop any thumbstick drift over time. So I guess we'll have to see, but it's nice that this is on here. Also, it's got a nice little indent on it so your hand sort of rests nicely on it. So we have another button here, two, looks like two, one up, one down. For this one, this is like a, a switch up and down you have here. And then you have two more buttons here. And of course, the paddle on the back. Like I said, you're not going to run out of buttons to input. Hi, editing get hip here. I noticed that I didn't outline this end scroll wheel on the very end of the throttle. This is a little wheel sort of thing that you can probably bind to something. I forgot to mention it as I've literally never used it. But I guess it's nice that it's on the end there. Anyway, back to the video. So on the bottom, you have... Ignore the Velcro. This doesn't come with it. I applied this Velcro myself to attach it to my setup. If you want to attach it in a different way without Velcro, I personally wanted to have the option to be able to quickly take it on and off of my setup when I wanted to. Because I also use it for sim racing. So it's kind of annoying if I was to screw this into my setup. But if you do have more of a permanent setup, there are screw holes here uh, dotted around the base so you can screw
screw this directly into your setup. The joystick also seems to have two, so that's really cool. And in terms of just using it on your desk, it's got some little rubber feet on the bottom on both of these. It'll stick to your desk pretty well, and you won't have too much movement when moving aggressively. I still, obviously, with quick movements, you're still going to, like, cause it to flick up and whatnot. That's sort of unavoidable with any HOTUS you get, but obviously, if you're screwing it into your setup or Velcroing it like me, you should have, uh, you should have no issues. So, yeah, this has been, this has been a really, really great purchase it's about 150 bucks like I said I got this within three days two three days from first master from their website as it was out of stock on Amazon again delivered in like two to three days which was sick I've been using it a lot in elite dangerous obviously I'll probably be giving my thoughts at some point on using it in Star Wars squadrons when that comes out as well for VR I'm super, super hyped for that game. But Elite Dangerous, it's been great. I've had no issues. It feels really nice to pilot a ship with it. I did also use it in War Thunder. Popular games like Elite Dangerous actually have presets for this. Most games that properly support a throttle and stick already have a preset for the Thrustmaster T6000M that you can select. Elite Dangerous had one. So you shouldn't have any issues with compatibility. So overall, this is a amazing setup. I'd highly recommend this. This does the job perfectly. I'm sure many of you watching this were in the same predicament I was and just didn't know what to get. So hopefully this video helps some of you guys out. If it did, please drop a like down below. I will be doing more future content using this stick and Star Wars Squadrons and possibly some Elite Dangerous. So subscribe if you're into any of that. I usually do VR stuff here. Thank you very much for coming this far in the video. I really appreciate it. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.